y over all this stuff. Oops. So what do I have to check here? Do f what? Partial respect to y. With respect to y. This is the x piece. It's already been done with x. If there is a phi that exists, it's already been done with x to get this. Let me do it now with respect to y. It's not pretty. It's not terrible either. You have to bring it up. Yeah, so you can rewrite this if you want to. You can rewrite this as this. Not a bad idea. So the negative 3 halves comes down. You can do it, Joe. X squared plus Y squared to the times the 2Y. And here, what's G? What do we got to do here? Exact same thing for that. GX. And can you tell? Maybe some of you guys can tell already. Exact same thing, but opposite. Yeah, it's just gonna have a y there. Y yeah, it's gonna be the same thing, right? Let's, let's do it real quick. It'll be I can rewrite this as y x squared plus y squared to negative three halves. There's a purpose. Don't worry. There's a reason I'm doing it with this ugly thing because I want to look back at what we did here and show you how we could have done it a lot easier. Um, where am I at? Yeah, g x equals. Uh, negative 3 halves. Oh, y, negative 3 halves y, negative 5 halves times 2x. Two two and so it's the same thing. Right? Here's the x and here's the y, there's the y and there's the x. They're the same thing. Are you with me? Yeah. What does that mean? It's exactly. It's conservative, which means what's got to exist? Potential. Uh, potential function. Potential function. Now, to cut to the chase a little bit, for this vector field, the one that we're working with, anybody just can anybody possibly see where this might have come from? So, so if we can't, let's say this: phi x must be the this first piece, right? Mm -hmm. Is it x squared plus y squared plus one half? So if I integrate that, and that sounds like it's going to be horrible. But it isn't because that's there and that's supposed to that needs it all that kind of stuff. So you so? No, I got to be careful about the constants here. But if I try to integrate this thing, no, let's let's try. Is this a unit vector? So what's phi going to be? If I integrate this piece, and again, these are the steps to find the potential function. You don't have to split it. Don't worry about the y squared there because y is just a constant now. So you could do like a u sub, right? So du would be 2x dx. Everything's in terms of x. You with me? So then I just need a 2 in there. So I have 1 half integral of, uh, let's see, that's du. It'll be u to the negative 3 halves du. Is that cool? And what do you get when you integrate that? Um, negative 2 u, or 1 half. Yeah. Negative 1 half. You get u to the negative 1 half. 1 half. 5 times negative 2. Times negative 2. So that's going to be negative u to the negative 1 half. So negative x squared plus y squared is negative 1 half. Right, plus it would be plus some function of y. So that's just r. Right. But if I did the if I did phi y the same way, I get the same kind of thing. Which means that you have a function. So it's basically going to be this thing here. Which is r. Which is one over r. Yeah. Uh, let me see. I don't want to lose this. Yeah. 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 What would that be you say is the same because you can move around the two and the three halves and then you still get the same thing? Where are we at, sir? So you're saying mm -hmm. the same thing because you can move around the two and the three halves and it'll be like. The yeah, same. the two comes out, x, y, negative three. Yeah. Um, yeah. Why did you pull out the one half as the coefficient? I one half to I make a two here because I need a two for my du. 
So I, get, I don't know how you guys are taught to do this. DU. But to me, I give myself what I need here to make it DU. So I thought it would be one half DU would equal x dx. And you have x dx, right? Yeah, so then you have a one half. So your one half shows up because you have a one half. My one half shows up because I need it too. At the end, it's the same thing. Cool. Um, what your constant say? Plus but I'm just trying to cut to the chase. If you did five, why well, did the whole thing? You get this again. So that's really all I need. This piece is going to be a constant eventually. So I get five equals uh, one over negative one over square root of x squared plus y squared. Which means if I wanted to integrate from some point to some point, from two to to ten ten in this case, all I have to do is do phi of 10, 10 minus phi of 2, 2. I found a function whose derivative is f. Therefore, the integral of f will be that function evaluated at the end points. In this case, they are actually points. So then I can just plug a 10, 10 in here and a 2, 2 in there, subtract, and that's the answer. You should get the same thing as if you were to finish out that integral we had earlier. Can we finish that one out? That's the idea of a conservative vector field. I don't, the minute I know what phi is, I don't have to do any R of T, I don't have to do any R prime, I don't have to do any rewriting F, I don't have to do any dot product. I just have to do phi at the top minus phi at the bottom, just plug them in. Just like we do in Math 180 when we integrated F and we got big F, we plug stuff in there and we're done. Same way. So Math 281 becomes Math 180 <laughs> When you have, and we well, dealing with these things, when you have a conservative vector field, it becomes what we're used to. Yeah. And for phi, you got that from x. Does it really matter if you can get it from? Because they should be the same? Yeah, they should be the same. And I, I skipped a few steps here because this is going to end up being a constant, which really doesn't matter when they integrate. It doesn't matter if it's constant. Okay. Is they'll subtract out. We're trying to build. We'll see. So do you want to do, I obviously skipped a few steps on doing this. Do you yeah. want to do like a finding a potential function? An actual problem. Problem, yeah. OK, let's do that. The one that's going to be a test. The one that's going to be a test. Is this included in the test? Yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah. it's actually 14 2. So it's 14. But the method we just 14 3. 14 3. 14 3. Yeah. So it's just four chapters? Mm -hmm. The question is from 14 Yeah, yeah just four sections. 14 3. But they're packaged. Yeah, it's just stuff. And, we, and we went like that. Oh, okay. Okay. The operative word there is yes. All right. Uh, let's see. Check if this is conservative. What do you do? Take the partial of y, take the partial of y. Good, so f y would be negative, negative yeah. 1. g x would be oh, yeah. oh, negative x. g x would be. I didn't really worry too much because I could tell it wasn't going to work anyway. But yeah, so negative x here, I get an x there. So is it conservative? No. Yeah. Yeah. Now to kind of still work with this one, how could I redo? Let's do 17 star. All I'd have to do to make it conservative would be to do what? Multiply. Put a negative right there, right? 
Because then this would be, or even just make that a plus. Maybe we can do that. If I make that a plus, then Fy is x and Gx is x. But we can't just make it. Well, I made a new problem. Well, what if we don't, <laughs> okay. don't know how to just make it something like that? All right, no, no. <laughs> this is uh, this is called no, this is called teaching. I'm making a new problem. <laughs> yeah. So I wanted to point out, you could see. Now you're not allowed me to do that. Obviously, you can't take the problem I give you and go. Well, <laughs> this is called. I want you to do this. So this is 17 star. Right, this is a new problem. The reason I want to do that is because I want to see, could you see the part that was wrong with this to make it, to make it conservative? If I want to make a conservative vector field on a, on a test, and I was checking my work before I gave it to you, and I go, shit, that's negative x, I should make it plus there. And then I give you the test, and I'm good to go. Right? Yeah. By looking at those two partials, how do we know it's not conservative? We have negative x and x. The way it was to begin with was that. These are not the same, so it's not. So then I made a new problem that was like that. Now, how do you find five? How do you actually find five? What's the first step? Integrate. Yeah, if five exists, this must be phi x. So we just kind of assume, we know it is, but we just basically prove that phi exists. So then I know that's phi x. So I don't have to do assume anything. Phi x is this. So what's phi going to be? What do I do to both sides to get there? Integrate. Integrate. One third. No, one fourth. Good. X to the fourth over four. And it's x. Uh, well, y, x squared. Squared. Y over two. I like it. Cool. Plus. Some function of y. Some function of y. Very often I'll just use u because g is sort of already taken. In DiffyQ, I think we always use g, but it all depends on your book. Um, Wait, we're going to talk and do the f and y and g of x. Is that just from the, just that one problem? So if I, I do this. Have f of y from that first x component and then the y component from g of x. So here's the first. Are you using just that one, the x? This is, uh, if phi exists, this is phi x. Oh, so then I want to get phi x, y. And then compare it to phi y, x. And if they are the same, then my assumption is true. There was a phi that these both came from. Oh, okay, no, no, no. Yeah, so that's phi x, now we find phi y. Mm -hmm. Well, we know what phi y is. We, we found what phi is to a point. To a certain degree, we know what phi is. And that's not good enough. And we have two pieces of information, so I should expect to use it. So if I gave you three pieces of information, you should expect to use all three, right? Like we did the other day. <coughs> so now what do I do next? Um, so if I was Since I, I, yeah, and just to show you why this makes sense, that must be phi y. So I know phi here, and I know phi y there. If I just get phi y from this, I can equate the two. So what's phi y from this? This piece? This piece? X squared over two. Yeah, this piece goes away. X squared over two. Plus seven. In fact, let me be more specific. Let me be clear. You with me? Q prime is Y. Yeah, and I put I always put that so that when I do the next step I don't forget that this is with respect to Y. Yes. I'm confused how I did this. And that's X four to four not What's the matter? So it's definitely next there. So, so if this is phi, and I know this is phi, because I know this is phi x. So how would I get phi? Integrate. The problem is, by itself, there's not enough information. There could be some other piece that was no, uh, nothing but y's. Because when I do phi x, anything that had nothing but y's in it went away. So when I integrate phi x, I have to leave myself a little spot saying, shit, there might have been some function of y there that I didn't know because I've only looked at the partial respect to x. It would have disappeared. You can just integrate. Then you would have had to say ux and do the next step anyway. So it really doesn't matter which one I start at. I eventually have to use both of them. Because phi y has lost information about any pieces that only had x's in them. Phi x has lost information about any pieces that only had y's in them. 
Does that make sense? That's why I have to use both of these. Okay. So you can see now what is this equal to? What is phi y? What do I know phi y is from the beginning? This guy. This must be phi x. That's phi y. So what does u of y, u y y has to be what? Y. Why? Because <laughs> that is there. It's kind of neat. If you do this test, you're guaranteed that these pieces are going to die. They have to. And this is going to point you to what it has to be to work. Wait, what, why can you let it equal to that? Say again? Why can you let it equal to the... They're the same thing. And phi y. Yeah, phi y. y is this. How do I know it's this? Because I know what phi is, right? Phi y is this. How do I know it's this? Because it's got to be. That's, that's in the y component. That must be phi y. So if this is the gradient of phi, this is phi x. This is phi y. Yeah, but how did you get phi y from phi? I take the partial respect to y. Oh, OK, so oh, that's phi yeah. x. That's phi y. You integrate phi x to get Not phi the major here. Phi yeah. blah, blah, blah. All right. Yeah, the question here is, is this conservative vector field? No. I if so, find the potential function. Okay, cool. Yeah. Awesome. So what's the last step to do here? Integrate. This is the partial, right? So what's u of y? Y squared over 2 <coughs> plus a constant, but we normally just kill the constant anyway. So we get phi equals, here's phi. Yeah. Phi equals x to the fourth over four <coughs> plus x squared y over two plus u of y, which we just figured out is y squared over two. How do you check yourself? Uh, the, the, Take the gradient. Make like sure it's this. Right? Same way you check yourself doing integrals before you. Take the derivative. Except for now, the derivative is the gradient. Is that a 2? Uh, is that a 2? Yeah. Yeah. So we, we, just, so, yeah. we just neglect the final C? We don't, we don't yeah, we normally don't worry about the C because the next thing we normally do with this function is we use it as an answer to an integral of f. So, so if I wanted to integrate this f from the point I don't care really to some other freaking point. The integral of this vector field from that point to that point, if I wanted to do this, that's going to be yeah, phi evaluated at 3, 4 minus phi evaluated at 1, negative 1. Then you just plug 3, 4 in there, get a number, minus plug 1, negative 1 in there, get a number. That's the part that's as close as you get to math 180. <laughs> Pretty damn close. Except, of course, our inputs are now points. So you know I'm going to get a problem <laughs> basically exactly like this. You know that. Do this, verify it's conservative, find a potential function, now integrate. All right, so there's a gimme. So phi is a potential function? Phi is a potential function. It's just called that because it has an associated vector field that. If I take the gradient of phi, it equals that vector field. That's why it's called a potential function, because it has a gradient field that goes with it. Can we take a break? What are, what are those points? <laughs> What's that? Take what are the points? One negative one. No, it's not arbitrary. That would be like part B of the question. This would be my part A. So what Actually, what this would be my part A. This would be my part B. Uh, is to find this. And this would be my part C. What would, we, what would be the question for part C? Uh, integrate the over the vector field the line from uh, one negative one to three. Oh, and do we know phi is just plugging the points yeah. for phi? Or you can even say I could be very evil. You could say over the uh, uh, circle or the ellipse or whatever shape I want from here to here, and it doesn't matter what path you take because it, all it is is it just depends on the endpoints. So, there, <laughs> do we have to integrate or just phi and plugging the points? That you did integrate. What is the integral of the vector field? It must oh, yeah, be yeah, phi yeah. because the derivative of phi yeah, yeah, is the vector field. Okay. 
That's the key. The integral of f of the vector field has to be phi because the gradient of phi is vector field. That, that, that's that's nap one eighty. But it's the integral of I mean the derivative of the Phi. So this is this. Therefore, this is that, roughly, right? It's not obviously meant to be some big official theorem, but the derivative of this is this. Therefore, the integral of this must be that. So That's all we're saying. That be, uh, when I found this function, when I found this, and that's independent of any integral question I could possibly ask. I could say for this vector field, is it conservative? And if so, find the potential function. I could stop. There'd be no integral question. But then I could ask an integral question. Now integrate the vector field, and then you go, oh, that's easy as shit. I know the potential function. I just got to plug in the input. Right. Just like math 180. All you have to do, do you care about the middle of the functions when you integrate? No, you do B, FB minus FA. That's all I care about. So you just plug in that 3 and 4 for the average minus FA. Yeah, so the X, you plug in 3. For the Y, you plug in 4. <laughs> Get a number. Yep. And then it's the same thing if you like started off with the B as Y instead of the X and you started to get it in. Yeah. You, like, if you integrate phi with phi, it's instead of integrating like, Oh, yeah. Phi. I could have done this whole process, but okay. instead of doing integral phi x dx, yeah, yeah. I could have done integral phi y dy. Okay. I would have had a ux here, but it would have eventually it would have worked out the same. I would have worked out to this, but you would have been equal to the other one. Instead of uy being y squared over 2, ux would have been x to the fourth over 4. Is if there I had, another way? So real quick, you want to see that real quick? I mean, oh, no, no, we don't want to. I'm just. No. Uh, <laughs> it's just, 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 just like here, I integrate this with the x, and I got stuff plus some function of y. Because now it's a constant according to this integral. A constant is any function of x. So this is just like plus big ass c. Now. <laughs> exactly. So now with x and y, this is plus a function of the variable that this thinks is a constant. So you've got to equal to I'm just thinking outside the box, like, like something you throw on us. Like, you know how right here, the integral of f, d, r, is it? That's basically our b down from the you know how that's our theory? Like, what if we didn't find it that way? Was there another way to like, do that problem we did earlier? You could, to do this problem, like to do this problem here, like if this is the only problem I gave you, and I could be semi-evil like that. You know. And I'm not going to. I mean, I could, I'm probably not going to give you an integral of a vector field that's conservative because I have to test to make sure you could do the other process. Because somebody could be smart enough to go, let me see if that's conservative. It is. Cool. I mean, all right, but shit, I never test even if you could do it the other way. So if I, if I gave you this and I said, do this integral, you could find the R of t for whatever path I told you to go from here to here. Yeah, do and do the whole steps, right? So, or you could do this, and then the integrals are really easy. Yeah. So you can certainly imagine in vector fields. I could give you vector fields whose integral is basically impossible, but they're conservative. Therefore, yes, you can do them. You with me? Sort of. Semi. Semi. Almost. Okay. <coughs> Well, this and homework. Right. So I gave you all the answers last time. For the homework, that should make that something you can at least check the answers. Um, I gave out the practice final last time too. So I forgot to bring extra copies with me. So mean you have to turn it in still? Turn what in? The homework? Yeah, you still have to turn it in. Yeah. I'm just going to check off that you did it, right. and it's up to you. So if you just want to copy out there, you did it. Do you have practice fun? <laughs> <laughs> it's up to you. If you don't want to get practice doing the homework, just totally. I'll be your office hours. They're after class, though, right? Yeah. What's up? Do you have practice finals in your office?
I, I should. It should be on a little pile. I'm hoping it didn't leave my home. I can just print one out. Where's the pack? 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 Uh, letting you know. So I might be in my office right before class on Monday. Okay. I think one of the bad of the tests I did 